Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. This is part of our English Bible series, and we're in the Jerusalem Bible. I've probably done, I know, a review of a Jerusalem Bible in hard copy before. This is about the translation. We're just going to pick it up off Wikipedia, try to add some context around some things, kind of use that as the base, and then go around it. But again, thanks for being here. And I do know there's a lot of you, because you tell me in the comments, that like either the Jerusalem Bible or the New Jerusalem Bible, or I think they're coming out with a new New Jerusalem Bible. I think I did a video on that too. All right. So the Jerusalem Bible, otherwise known as the JB or TJB, is an English translation of Bible published in 1966 by Darton, Longman, and Todd as a Catholic Bible and includes 73 books, the 39 books of the Hebrew Bible along with seven Deuterocanical books, the Old Testament, 27 books shared by all Christians as the New Testament, and it also contains copious footnotes and introductions. I've read the Jerusalem Bible lightly off and on over the years. It's never been my primary Bible. But most of you would know I'm a King James guy, big time. Do a lot of videos on that here. But we're just trying to let people see the breadth of all the translations. I know at one time, Larry Vance, Lawrence Vance out of Florida, had an incredible list of Bible translations, but there's so many coming out that of the making of Bibles, it seems there is no end. Okay, for roughly half a century, the Jerusalem Bible has been the basis of the lectionary for Mass used in Catholic worship throughout much of the English speaking world outside of North America, though in recent years, various bishops' conferences have begun to transition into more modern translations, including the English Standard Version in the United Kingdom and India, which that's fascinating. There's an English Standard Catholic Bible um, and the re Revised New Jerusalem Bible in Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland. So the textual basis of it is the La Bible de Jerusalem Metaresic text with strong Septuagint, especially in Psalms, and some Vulgate influence. You know, for centuries it was the Vulgate or nothing. In the New Testament, La Bible de Jerusalem eclectic text with high correspondence to the Nestle Island Novum Testament and Grace Sheet with major variant readings from the majority text and sacred tradition, i.e. the comma Jehonium and the longer ending of Mark incorporated or noted. And the Deuterocanicals, or the second canon, or the Apocrypha, a Septuagint with Vulgate influence. And its translation type is not literal, per se, it is a dynamic equivalent. And I'm going to hit this to go to the DLT Bibles website. And it's got this popular edition. And it looks like it's 1999 pounds. Uh, so that's obviously British compact popular edition. You can probably get off CBD and all this as well. Okay, so here's the history. In 1943, Pope Pius XII issued an encyclical letter, Divino uh, Afflante Spiritu, which encouraged Roman Catholics to translate scriptures into the Hebrew and Greek text. And that was kind of a seminal time, because remember, before that, it's like Vulgate or bust, even though there's a lot of nuances to that, doing Reims version, Chalnir revision, uh, and then in the 1500s, you had some back and forth, even Erasmus, Greek text. You had the, the Pope giving a, a kind of an imprimatur on that. I think it may have been dedicated to the Pope. And then the Complutensian Polyglot by Cardinal Ximenes. All right. Uh, rather than Jerome's Latin Vulgate, which... Like the King James translators really brag on Jerome a lot. He was evidently a great translator. As a result, but he even complained they were taking the sheets from him and didn't give him a chance to go back over it. As a result, a number of Dominicans and other scholars at the Echo Biblic in Jerusalem translated the scriptures into French. The product of these efforts was published as La Bible de Jerusalem in 1956. So the French translation served as the impetus for an English translation in 1966. For the majority of the books, the English translation was a translation of the Hebrew and Greek text. In passages with more than one interpretation, the interpretation chosen by the French translators is generally followed. For a small 
a number of Old Testament books, the first draft of the English translation was made directly from the French, and then the general editor, Friar Alexander Jones, produced a revised draft by comparing this word for word to the Hebrew or Aramaic text. The footnotes and book introductions are almost literal translations from the French. The editor of the New Jerusalem Bible, Henry Wansbro, claims the Jerusalem Bible is basically a translation of the French Bible, Bible de Jerusalem, conceived primarily to convey the English-speaking world, the biblical scholarship of this French Bible. Also, this is one thing a lot of people really like about this, is a translation of the Tetragrammaton, Tetra-4, Grammaton letters, the yad ve yad ve. Uh, the Jerusalem Bible returned to the use of the historical name Yahweh as the name of God in the Old Testament, rendered as such in 6,823 places within this translation. If La Bible de Jerusalem of 1956 had been followed literally, this name would have been translated as the Eternal. The move has been welcomed by some, however it's not been popular among groups who would prefer the name of God to be left unpronounced or replaced by the Lord, all caps or another title. On June 29, 2008, Cardinal Francis Arenze, Prefect of the Congregation of Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacrament, wrote to the presidents of all conferences of bishops at the behest of Pope Benedict XVI, who was head of the Doctrine of Faith, the Inquisition before that, stating that the use of the name Yahweh was to be dropped from Catholic Bibles in liturgical use, most notably the CTS New Catholic Bible, which uses the Jerusalem Bible text as well as from songs and prayer since pronunciation of this name violates long-standing Jewish and Christian tradition. Um, in 1973, the French translation received an update. A third French edition was produced in 1998. In 1985, the English translation was completely updated. The new translation, known as the New Jerusalem Bible, was freshly translated from the original languages and not tied to any French translation except indirectly because it maintained many of the stylistic interpretative choices of the French Jerusalem Bible. And just uh, Really, all this is kind of important. In 2007, at least in some ways to some people, the Catholic Truth Society published the CTS New Catholic Bible consisting of a revision of the original 1966 Jerusalem Bible text in order to make its text match that which is contained in the lectionaries, which are used in most English-speaking countries. I need to, maybe I have, I've done a video on what a missile is, I need to do one on what a lectionary is, if I haven't already. Maybe, I don't think I have, but years if I have. Um, and the name Yahweh has been replaced with Lord throughout the Old Testament. I'm going to hit this too about the Pontifical Biblical Commission. Um, I may have done a video on that already. I don't know. Last updated 1998, the French La Bible de Jerusalem is currently a subject of revision project operating in a title the Bible in its tradition. According to the notes, more weight will be given to the Septuagint in the translation of the Hebrew Scriptures, though the Masoretic text will remain the primary source. Publisher Darton, Longman, and Todd published the revised New Jerusalem Bible in 218, substantially revising the JB and NJB text. The new translation applies formal equivalence, no longer a dynamic equivalence, which is kind of non-literal, for more accurate rendering of the original Scriptures sensitivity to readable speech patterns and more inclusive language it contains new study notes and book introductions written by Henry Wansbro. One last thing, let's see who Henry Wansbro is. Born 1934 as an English biblical scholar, Roman Catholic priest, monk of Ampleforth Abbey, and uh, 1990 to 2004 he served as master of St. Bennett's Hall, Oxford. Pretty interesting. Um, so anyhow, that's the Jerusalem Bible. And uh, of course, I'm just letting you know it's out there. Some of you really like it, like I said. And some of you like the New Jerusalem Bible. Maybe one or two have commented on that revised New Jerusalem Bible too. I don't remember. Seems like they have over the years. But, uh, you know, I just stick with King James. I, it's most accurate to me. So my research... So God bless. We love you. Thanks for being here. And uh, put it on social media. Share. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. And check out our other videos. We'll see you later. And join us daily. Bye.